Okay, so today, welcome. Today, in today's class, uh, for all of you that are with us today, watching on the live stream or are um, joining us in World, and you can see there's a bunch of people here. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at how to do some lighting. <laughs> how to do some lighting with um, uh, in Second Life. And uh, to do that, uh, with the focus of um, using the images that we make, to um, to what to you to make black and white photos. So that's our goal today. Um, we want to do that. Um, and in order to do that, second. Okay. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is focus on um, a technique that I use. You can choose to use it or not. Um, where we light a scene using only red light. Um, and then use only red light to, um, uh, uh, to to turn it into a black and white image. So by using an only re only red light as our wind light, both as the ambient and the sunlight, we will be able to uh, hopefully um, should be able to. Um, make some pretty cool, uh, we should be able to make some pretty cool, sorry, I was getting, uh, some IMs. We should make some pretty cool black and white images. So, um, without further ado, let's take a look at how we do this. Um, if you haven't seen the classes already about how to uh, make wind light, or, uh, I think tutorials, photo two tutorials eight and nine, um, uh, 8, 9, and 10, 11. Go ahead and have a look at those. We're just going to cover um, pretty quickly here how to make the wind light, and then we're going to bring it into Photoshop. So if you don't have Photoshop, um, I think you can do the same things in GIMP or some other image editing software. But for our purposes, we're going to just stick to using Photoshop. Okay? So um, let's go ahead and begin by making, uh, just setting the skylight to um, the noon. And. Um, and then hitting a uh, new sky preset and then obviously this will bring up just make the window bigger here I know some people claim that they can't see it very well okay so um so yeah here we go um, we made a new light sky preset and um, we want to go ahead and now uh, take away the clouds. We don't need cloud light. For those of you remember that cloud light creates um, creates light. So we want to go ahead and go to clouds and set the cloud light to zero. So you kind of can see a little effect here, but we'll see it more in a moment. And then we want to set the blur uh, haze uh, to white and the blue density to black. Bring all of these values down to zero, all of them. And then just take the haze density itself and go up. You can click the click it and go up one with the uh, keyboard or you, uh, arrows, or you can just click it and kind of drag it with your mouse till you get a little light. Right. So now we don't have any light coming from the sky. It's all black, and the only light we have is the sun. Make sure the gamma is set to one. It should be. So let's begin and. Um, First of all, why are we going to use only red light? Well, what we want to do is make a black white image. And a black white image has no color value. And um, when you take the image into Photoshop, depending on how you um, desaturate the image, you're not going to know exactly how the colors are going to look um, because the, the, the um, Photoshop will determine what level uh, of intensity to apply to any given chroma value. So if we can remove all the chroma values from the scene or have one chroma value, one color value, um, then we can have a better indication of what this light is going to look like uh, when, we, um, uh, when we bring it into Photoshop. So we can light in Second Life with a little bit better of understanding how that's going to look when we ultimately get it into Photoshop. 
Um, all right, so on that note, Okay, so on that note, uh, let's go ahead and um, make a red sunlight. And all we want to do from this, it's pretty simple, is just set the red value to 255 and the green value to 0 and the blue value to 0. And now we have a pure red sunlight. We just hit OK for now. And we want to make a pure red uh, ambient light. So just 255, 0, and 0. Now everything is completely and totally red. Not really helpful for what, um, what we're trying to do in terms of uh, you know, lighting to start with, but let's take it down. So let's first take the ambient and lower this one to something that looks a little bit more normal. So 0 is too much, and this is probably too bright. So how about somewhere in this range? So let's say 13. So now we have a uh, an ambient light that's a little bit more normal and then let's take the sunlight what we don't want to do is have we don't want to lose any of the detail on her skin because if we do that then we're just blowing out all that detail and we're losing all that color all that information okay, let me just... um, all right so then if we I'll just show you, if we open up the sun and color moon, or sun and moon value, and we start lowering the luminance down to where it's no longer, if you watch her arm right here, it's no longer blowing out the color. Somewhere around 15 or so. All right. So now the color value of an arm, we can see there's a little bit of, a, of detail on her skin here. All right, that's the, um, we're still getting information, but I still think that the black level, the shadow here and here, is just too bright. There's not enough detail there. I'm sorry, there's too much detail. It's too bright. It doesn't look realistic. So I'm going to open up the ambient, and I'm going to lower that a little bit. I'm going to start at black, and I'm going to come up to something like, like that. Oops, sorry. So now we begin to get something that looks a little bit more realistic. And... I'm just going to move the sun around a little bit so we can see how it affects. And for those of you to remember, always remember 6.01 a.m. is sunrise and second life. So I'm going to set it to 6.01. Then I'll move the east angle so it's focused directly on her. And now we have what I think is a fairly consistent light. All right, it looks fairly realistic. Um, you've got to look through the fact that it's just red. And see it for what it is. So you're looking for shades and gradations. Um, and we would go here um, to make sure ambient occlusion is set. Now, there's a little trick here. For those who don't know ambient occlusion, please take a look at the video that I made about ambient occlusion. Um, but one of the tricks about uh, shooting with red light and ambient occlusion is that unlike typical situations with ambient occlusion, where we set the effect to zero, when we shoot in red light, set it all the way down to negative one. Okay, even if you don't have the same slider, just go to this box and type in negative one and hit tab and it'll come up. Um, for avatars, the settings should probably be something like um, 850 and then 10,000, 250, and then this value you can, you don't really have to worry about it too much, but you might want 0.5 or something like that. All right. Uh, so we're going to set, I'm just going to start with this angle um, and uh, sort of do a quick review about shedding, set, setting shadows. So I've set the ambient settings. Now I want to set the shadows. We see that um, there's a bit of a, a um, there's a bit of a, um, a blurriness to these shadows. So I want to set the shadow softness all the way down. It's too much. I set this one down and they're too jagged. So I'm going to just adjust it until I get it as sharp as I can, which is probably like this. Hard to tell. If you don't have a really high-end computer, leave the shadow res to 1. If you do, try and raise it all the way up to 4, and then fine-tune the shadow clarity. 
uh, look down here on the straps on her um, on her bottoms and watch the lines as they get sharper. So probably something like like that is the sharpest we're going to get. And then we're going to go to shadow bias and we're just going to try and connect the shadows to the body and I think that's pretty good. There's still going to be a little bit of nonsense here, but for now that's okay in terms of jaggediness. Make sure we hit default to set this back down to 1. And for those of you who've already seen the video, you'll know that um, Uh, um, where was it? Oh, so um, yeah. So we want to set this down to one, and then we have our shadow set. And I'm not going to add any um, depth of field right now. I'm just going to go ahead and take a snapshot, and then um, save that snap snapshot, and we're going to open it up in um, Photoshop and have a look at it. So I'm going to snap it, and just give me just one second to save everything and send us over to Photoshop. Okay. Moment. All right. Up in bridge. For those of you who were in the last class, we're trying to avoid what happened in the last class by not opening up windows before we take a look at what's in them. All right. So, um, yeah, so let's take a look here at the window. <laughs> yeah, I know it was fun, but like, you know, one time's enough. And then after that, you know, I think we're going to have a problem. All right, let me just open, show you in Bridge what this looks like. All right, there we go. So you'll notice, um, before we move on, you'll notice that um, there's a lot of uh, blotchiness here around her. Um, around her body uh, from the ambient occlusion. So the ambient occlusion is rather tight and not very spread out. <laughs> yes, for now it, it, it All right, so let me go back to Second Life. And um, we're going to head and change this value. Um, we're going to start at 850, and then we're going to make increments of 100 to see the difference as we go up. All right, so we'll start at 950, and then we'll... Hit this button and save it, and then we'll go to uh, 11:50. Then we'll hit we'll hit save, resnap and shave, and then we'll do 12:50. Sorry, and we'll hit this button and save, and then we'll hit 13:50, and we'll snap and save. Then we'll hit 1450. I know it's a little laborious, but this is how you learn how to what all these settings do. And then we'll go to 1550. And we'll go to 1650. All right. And uh, let's just take a look now back in bridge. And uh, this was 950, 1050, 1250, 1150, 13, 14, 15. And... Um, 1650. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm really not very happy with still how tight it is. So I'm going to go back to FS and I'm just going to set this to 2650. And I want to see what that looks like. And I'll save it. Um, you have the same ambient, I think, as everyone else. That's why I don't really like it right now. I'm using the ambient that came with Firestorm. Because I know a lot of people don't have the ambient settings that I use, the ambient occlusion settings that I use. So that's, thank you for reminding me, that's probably why these settings aren't working the way that I like. Because I don't use this ambient occlusion, because um, it's not very good. But we'll figure it out anyway, so we're learning. Oops, hit the camera. Whatever. Alright, so uh, let's go back and take a look at 2650. So now you can see it's a little bit more spread out. And I'm going to go back to Second Life. And I'm going to try to set it to 3650 and see what that does till we get something that looks nice. For those of you who want to know, um, who are more interested in ambient occlusion, I'll do a video soon about that and I'll show you how I, what my settings are for that. Um, so okay, for now, this is, I'll just have to live with this. This ambient occlusion is really lame. Um, in fact, uh, let me just show you what it looks like 
um, in my settings for those who are interested. So one moment here and I will switch it over. Second. Do, 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 do. Takes a minute, get it set. All right, now that should have done it. And let me come back to FS. And let me just toggle my shaders. All right, so hopefully we're going to take the same image now, but with the new settings. And let's see if it's any different. Maybe I'm mistaken. All right, so think so. Yeah. All right, so save that, and we'll go back to bridge, and we'll transition over. This is before, after. So you see, this doesn't quite look as good. So let me go back and set it the way that I normally do. There we go. Down. Refresh. Take it. Transition. Come back. Oh, hold on. Okay, and there we go. So we're getting a little bit more where I want it to be. Now you see how it's not as blotchy, it's a lot finer, the grain is better. That's the kind of thing that I like. I'm gonna raise it up a little bit more. 3000, try again. Go back. Doesn't quite like that, it's way too big. So go back, set it back down to here. All right, don't get too lost in damage inclusion today because it takes a while. But nonetheless, think I can live with what I had before. All right, so back, set it to 1500. Yeah. Oh, I knew I was doing something wrong. Hold on. Short by date modified. All right, there we go. Yeah, all right, here we go. Twelve fifty. I won't be switched back for a I'll just keep showing this is twelve fifty. Yes, I am right now. Okay. So I think one thousand. Yeah, that kind of works for now. Okay. So, going back to FS now. So we have the base shot that we want, and we want to open it up in Photoshop and take a look at um, how to take that red light image and what it looks like when we go into Photoshop. So let me just open up Photoshop real quick. Just a second, I need to shut down a bunch of stuff, working on. All right, go. Okay, so, on a moment. Sorry about the uh, situation here, but I just want to be careful because last time, for those who were on the stream, stuff popped up that probably wasn't the best stuff to be popping up in world, um, and I'm trying to avoid doing that again. So, uh, 
Yes. See what I'm saying? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this should work. And I'm just going to open up the image here. All right. Okay, so here's the image in Photoshop. Uh, pretty exciting stuff, I know. And um, what I want to show you is how we take this image very quickly and turn it into a black and white image uh, without a lot of work. So um, if you set your Photoshop settings to um, photography, it'll give you this template here, this sort of layout. And on this layout, under adjustments, you'll find a whole bunch of different adjustments here. And you go to the you go to the black and white one, and the only thing you need to do is set reds to 100. Now we have exactly what we wanted. Hi, Havari. Uh, welcome. Which is a black and white image pulled from uh, Second Life that um, has a good deal of color, color information. But there's something that we want to pay attention to, and that is the histogram. So we want to expand this one out. And we want to find the histogram. Sorry, this, my settings are a little bit messed up. I'm not used to this. And all channels. Here we go. So this is the histogram. And what the histogram does is it shows us um, all of the color values in the scene and how much spread we have of those values in the scene. Um, so if I eliminate this, we'll see, and I've taken away the black and white layer, that we have no blue or green values, we'll never have red values, but they're not complete. In other words, they stop at about level 236 and don't go up to 255. We want them to go up to 255 because that means we're getting the full um, luminance values possible in Second Life. We want all 255 layers. So what we're going to do is go back to Second Life and we're going to raise up the sun and color moon value or the sun and moon color value just one notch to 16 hit OK save it then we're going to go to bridge one moment and this is that new image this is the one right here doesn't look that much different we're going to open it up in Photoshop, and you'll see now, I'll just hit this, you'll see now that the luminance value, when it's just going up by one notch, now brought all of the color information up to 100. So this is before, where the color information is not going up to 255, it's about 230. And just by raising the luminance value up one notch from 15 to 16, now we have the full range of luminance values in Second Life to work with. We then simply go here to color black and white filter and this is the properties for that filter right here sorry it's not showing up very well the way it's laid out and we set that to 100 and now we have a base light image that looks very similar to this image that we can use it to light from it doesn't have any of those distorted values all right so it's a little bit more helpful when trying to light a scene to light with red if you want to know in world here, what the image is going to look like here once you pull out all the color values. All right. Um, pretty simple tutorial. Not that much really more to say than that. Um, other than um, you can play with obviously um, the image a lot more. You could add grain to it and different things like that. Um, one of the neat tricks that you can do um, a lot of times if you're playing with color, this is not really what we're talking about today, but it's kind of helpful. Is a selective color. And if you go to Selective Color, then you can go to the black channel. And by going to the black channel, you can create this effect, right? By raising the black channel, raising the black level, and then by going to the neutral level, and then by going to the white level, you can begin to play with the black levels a little bit to create different effects automatically. It's a way of not having to mess with curves. You're not into messing with curves. They're kind of a pain sometimes. But uh, play with selective color a little bit to see if you get the kind of a look that you want. Play around with the settings. Just a very quick tutorial on how to shoot with red light, black and white. And uh, we'll just take some different um, uh, light um, perspectives here. 
to show you how simple this is. Once you set up the um, the wind light, then it's just a matter of moving the sun to whatever direction you want to get the effect that you're looking for. And I'm not going to worry about shadows right now. I'm not going to worry about angles. I don't have time for all that. Uh, let me set this here. That's, I think we got something like that. All right. So um, I'll go back to bridge. And now we have different, all the same wind light, but I've just moved to the sun to create different emotional values. And uh, if I were to take this image, for example, and pop it open in, in, uh, in Photoshop, just click the black and white adjustment layer, hit 100, and now I have this image, which I can use as a base image. Now you can also play with the image in Second Life. If I go back and I say, well, I want to make it darker in Second Life, I can go ahead and just, in terms of the shadows, go ahead and set that to 2, reset, refresh. Um, and we will transition and go to this one. We have these two images. One's a little darker than the other in terms of the dark, in terms of the um, luminosity of the ambient layer or the ambient light. And we just set this to 100. And now we have a little bit more of a contrast. I don't really like the um, the shadows in the background. I think that what happened is shadow clarity went off. So let me just fix that. See if that's actually what's going on here. Just, yeah, it's pretty ugly looking. What is that? Like they're not casting shadows anymore. What, what, why are they not? Hold on a second. Better. Anyways. Oh, I'm going to crash. 